Hi students! Uh, many of you have wanted to find integrals that you don't know how to find, and you've been asking for help, and I just want to remind you where we came from. Don't forget your roots. There was a time when we didn't know how to do any integrals at all, and at that time we used approximation methods, and I think Desmos is a great tool for using what you know about how to use approximation methods. So let's just remember how these rectangle approximation methods work. I have drawn here the arbitrary curve, and if I want to find the area under the curve between two values a and b, um, I'm going to divide it into a whole bunch of rectangles and add up the area of each of those rectangles separately. All right, so these rectangles are all the same width. They're whatever this length is divided by the number of rectangles I have. So I'm going to call that delta x. That's the width of the rectangle. And it's b minus a divided by n, where n is the number of rectangles. All right, so let's just choose one rectangle out of the middle here. Um, I want to number the rectangles so that they're easy to find. So I'm going to call this one rectangle 0, and this one rectangle 1, and this one rectangle 2. So this one is going to be rectangle i. So how do I find the area of rectangle i? Well, it's going to be the width, and that we already know. That's delta x times the height. All right, well, what's the height? We're using the function that we're finding the area under to determine the height. Um, and in particular, if I'm going to do a, let's say, a left rectangle approximation method, I'm going to choose the leftmost x value within my interval as the x value I'm going to plug into the function to tell me my height. So the question is, it's going to be f of something, but if I have gone over by i rectangles, exactly what is that value? Well, here I'm at a, and I've gone over by zero widths. Here I'm a plus one width. Here I'm a plus one two widths. So over here, it's going to be a plus i of the widths. Oh, sorry, I was calling width delta x. a plus i times delta x. So this is the kind of approach that we're going to use within Desmos. Let's take a look at that. So first, let's make a function. Um, let's use. Let's do something we know. Let's do square root of uh, 4 minus x squared, maybe. <clears throat> All right, so there's, there's our curve. And I want to find the area under the curve. So first, let's define the width of the rectangles. So I'll let w be width, because I don't want to write delta x, is b minus a, b minus a divided by n. And I'm going to add sliders for all these things. Uh, I'm just going to set by hand. I want my a value to be negative 2 and my b value to be positive 2. Don't forget the picture that tells you what all these things mean. a and b are the two bounds that I'm trying to find my area between. n is the number of rectangles. I'll set the number of rectangles equal to something like 100 to start with. OK, so I found all that. And now w is my width. All right, let's find, let's write an equation for the area of the ith rectangle. So that's going to be what I said. It's width times height is going to be my function. And remember, f was my function defined up here. Evaluated at a plus i times the width. <clears throat> OK, don't pay attention to the graph right now. So now what I want to do is I want to find the overall area. So I'm going to call that capital A sub t for total. Here's the trick. If you type the word sum, you get the sigma notation. And oh, I forgot that they like to call this n. Can I call this i? Or let's call this c. Well, you got to call it a different variable than all the ones we're using so far. And I'm already using i here, and I'm already using n up there. So I guess I'll use c. So c is going to go from 0 to n. Because remember, we're adding up each of the rectangles. And so I want c to start out at the 0th rectangle. And then I want to add the area of the first rectangle, and the second, and the third, all the way up to the 100th rectangle. And so what am I adding together? It's those area equations of that particular uh, rectangle. So I don't have a graph here, because as you remember, a definite integral produces a number, not a, not a range of numbers. It's not a function. Um, and that number is 6.27. Let's just check to see if that makes intuitive sense. So uh, I know that it's half a circle. 
and the circle's radius two. So if I use the equation I know already, I know uh, pi r squared, so pi times uh, two squared is four. So that should give me that, but it's only half the circle, so when I divide it by two, that gives me 6.28318. So this is 6.27653, so that's not so close. So what I could do is I could increase the number of rectangles. When n is 1,000, now I've got 6.282, it's getting closer. So with 10,000 rectangles, now that's getting pretty close. All right, so let's make this one step more complicated. We've got this, uh, it's not really a function, um, it's really just a, a value, but we've, got, we've been calculating the area under this particular curve. What if I wanted to make the radius of this curve variable? So what if I wanted this uh, definite integral to actually be a function of the size of the circle? So in other words, I want to be able to say something like this. Um, I'm going to make it take an input, and that input is supposed to give me the radius of the circle that I'm finding the area under. Um, well, let's not actually do this quite yet. Let's start at the bottommost level. So this is my curve. So if I want it to be able to change size, I've got to make this, which is the radius squared, a variable. So instead of taking <coughs> one input, now we'll take two inputs. So now I've got a, a nice curve defined. And what else needs to change? I guess the bounds of integration, because if, I, if my radius is changing, I want to go from a negative radius to positive radius, because that's the full extent of my circle. So I'm going to rename this one to capital L for left. And it's going to be a function of the radius. And I'm going to call this one capital R for right. And it's going to be function of the radius. So now my left and right bounds go from negative radius to radius, which means the the width of each of my rectangles is also a function of the radius because now I'm going from my right bound minus my left bounds divided by n. What else needs to change? So the area equation now needs to take a radius as input as well so that it can give that radius to the width function here and here. Oh, and it's telling me, I was ch checking what was wrong, and it's saying the function f requires two arguments. Arguments is another word sort of for inputs. Um, so remember, we need to give f an x value and now also an r value. So here's f. This is all the x value we're trying to give it. So now we've got to give it the r value. Oh, and we don't have a anymore. Now a is called left. OK, I think that's done it. Um, so now we've got to give our a function what number rectangle are we finding the area of and the radius. So that means here we can make uh, it a function of the radius and now we can pass this one the radius. Cool. Um, let's make a table actually of x1 so now we can see uh, actual individual points that it's calculating. So a circle of radius 2 has uh, a definite integral of 6.27, which was close to what we got last time. Uh, a circle of radius 3 has 14.12. Let's just double check that that makes sense. Uh, so pi times 3 squared is pi times 9 divided by 2. So that gives us 14.13. So it's in the ballpark. Um, I actually changed it so it's only using 100 rectangles. So if we make this 10,000, and the actual value is 14.137, and now I'm getting 14.137. Um, cool. OK, so I found a way to take a definite integral and make that definite integral be a function of another variable. Not only that, but the left bound and the right bound of integration that we're integrating between are also a function of that variable. So this is a very flexible framework now that you can use to calculate whatever integrals you would like.